Hello, uh, my name is Alexander and I am technical front-end lead at OneRs. Uh, today we continue our educational series and recently we've developed a little uh, website using React, TypeScript and a library called Framer Motion. Here is the final result, uh, which is available via the, the link in the description. You can also check out our GitHub page for a final result. And now I'll show you a step-by-step -step process of its creation. Let's begin. We'll start uh, with adding some fonts to our project. And the fonts that we'll be using are uh, Namo, Roboto Serif, uh, Roboto Slab, uh, and this came Modernist. After that, we need to import uh, this file uh, with uh, fonts to a file with scss variables. Uh, apart from that, uh, we need to create uh, variables for main colors and variables for uh, font names. So if we want to change them at some point, uh, we'll be able to do that in one place. Uh, our website also needs to support several different display resolutions, uh, which is why we also want to add some breakpoints in variables for future usage. Uh, let's also reset some of default browser styles so they don't conflict with our custom styles. Now we need to define some TypeScript interfaces. Uh, constants and enums. Uh, let's start with the constants to define periods, countries and subjects. Uh, for the periods we have Vikings age and assimilation. For countries we have Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Norton. And for subjects we have has history and culture. We also need to create interfaces for data consistency uh, we'll use enums from a constant file. Uh, the first interface is period item interface, uh, uh, which has a name field uh, with periods type defined earlier, and the rest of the fields are simple strings. Uh, the next interface is a periods data interface, which is a mapped type. Uh, where keys are taken for, from periods. Uh, the next one is info item interface, which will contain uh, information about col colors and strings to display. And mm, the last three interfaces are also mapped uh, with information about countries, subjects and periods. Uh, we also need to store some static data. For that, we've created a data TypeScript file. First, we need to import constants and interfaces from earlier. Second, we need to import images from assets images file, which contains lots of different URLs of our images. Uh, third, we need to create a periods data object which implements periods data interface. And then we need to populate this object with data. Uh, this object stores information about colors, images and strings used for a given period. And last, we need to create a data object which implements a data interface and also populate it with data for each period, subject and country to store similar information about colors, images and blocks. And that's it for the boring part. Uh, we can finally make uh, a, a layout for the site. Uh, let's begin with the nav bar and the list of countries. Uh, we need to import dependencies for the component and this is the place we start using Framer Motion. Uh, we also need to import styles and constants that we've created earlier. 
Uh, we have two props for this component, which is an active country and uh, a handler for a country selection. Component itself is a simple navigation HTML element taken from Framer Motion, but it has custom props to define animation. So we have here initial opacity of zero. Uh, then we want it to become visible. Uh, we need a delay of uh, 0.8 seconds and for a half a second for duration. Uh, inside the navigation we have a list of elements um, which is generated based on countries in them. We need to create a state uh, to make this list disabled during animation. And we need to define a click function to handle uh, this list element. Uh, now we need to add this component to a home page. Uh, import countries, import uh, navbar and make it load lazily and create a handler to change countries because we want to control it from a home component. And also add uh, this navbar to the layout. Let's now create a mobile version of this navigation bar and show it from a burger menu. Uh, here we import animate presence, uh, which animates components uh, when they are removed from uh, React tree. Any motion components are contained in the removed child uh, that have an exit prop will fire that animation before uh, the entire tree is finally removed from the DOM. We must also provide a key prop to any motion component so that animate presence can track their presence in the tree. So we want to control this uh, burger menu from outside, so there are props for that. And uh, when the menu is opened, uh, use effect starts playing animation. Uh, now we need to add a button which opens the menu. Uh, and now we need to add animate presence. Mm, uh, add a condition to the show a menu and use motion div component with settings for animation. Uh, then we add a list with initial zero opacity mm, make it visible on animation and for each list element we want to add to a delay so that they show in cascade And we want the same effect for the exiting menu. Then we need to add uh, a class to show active element, uh, a click handler and the content that should be displayed. And now we need to add uh, this component to the home component, uh, add a state for opening the menu, uh, a handler for menu click, and uh, we need to add this component to the layout. And this is how it looks uh, with the mobile resolution. We also need to add a logo component, uh, which should also appear uh, with our menu on page startup. Initially it has zero opacity, and then it becomes visible. Uh, we also added a change of color here, which will be used further in the mobile version. And of course we need it also in our uh, home component. 
uh, with a handler on a click and we also need to add it to our layout. Uh, we can now prepare components and hooks to show animation. For that we've created uh, an info item component. Props for this component are extended from info item interface and we've created that we've created earlier and uh, use variance prop which is basically our settings for a given animation. Uh, let's begin with a section uh, to which we need to pass our variance and other props are taken from names and within these variants. Uh, we've created a custom hook uh, which will store settings for animations and it will be used uh, inside home component. Uh, <clears throat> for this animation uh, we want to start from uh, X100 uh, and we want to move it to 0. So we want to move it from uh, right to left. Uh, when component is removed uh, we want it to return to its initial position and change its color taken from a selected period. In our home component we want to add some more states for period and subject and current info. Initial value for period is Viking, for subject it's history and for country it's Norway. Uh, then we need to add a use effect hook uh, which will change current info depending on period, subject or country. Uh, then we need to use this custom hook uh, use info animation variables and create a state which will store current animation. Uh, and then we need to import info item inside animation presence and pass all following props uh, that are shown here. And this is the result for this change. Let's add some images to this section, which gives us the following result. Uh, then we need to create another block uh, with with its own animation. Uh, for this block, uh, we want to animate a clipping with a certain way. Uh, and on exit, we want to return to the initial value and change background color in a similar way. Uh, to the previous animation. And we should have this as a result. Uh, we now need to add another image to this smaller block which gives us the following result. And now we want to add a text block to the smaller image and we also want to animate this text block in its own fashion. So we need to add more objects to our custom hook with animations. Uh, we also need to add text itself to this text block. And now we have uh, pictures and text with different sliding animations. Now let's create a period switcher component. Uh, we want to take our periods, map them and create an H3 
element for each. Uh, we have two periods. One of them is Vikings age and the other one is assimilation. Then in the home component we want to create another state to contain the pre pre previous period. And we also want to add this component to the layout, which gives us something like this. Uh, we want to animate this feature. Initially, we are going to show it and set this transi tra transition configuration. Uh, then we want to define a function that will return uh, width for this component for different breakpoints and then use this function for animation. We also want this feature to slide up when we select it. Depending on breakpoint, it will behave slightly differently. And here we use it in our variance function. And in some cases, we want this feature to slide either left or right. So let's just pass this variance to a prop. Uh, then we need to use a prop custom, uh, which works as an argument to animation functions. Uh, then we define an initial state of animation. Uh, then there is a function that returns animation name that should be used depending on the condition. Uh, we now want to change uh, the initial screen. So we need to create a new component for that. Uh, we call it period item. It will be in a, it will be written in a similar fashion to info item but with several changes. Uh, we also want to add this component to the home component and we also need a separate state for animations. Uh, this component should be visible only if current info is not selected. And with these changes initial page should look like this, filled with uh, solid color. Uh, let's define the first animation for this section that we've just created. Uh, it also uses variants here, uh, but this time animations will be stored inside uh, the component itself. Uh, so basically we want for animation to start depending on which position this section is, uh, which will be needed for period change. And on exit we want this component to slide either to the left or to the right. Uh, we also want to add an image to this block. Uh, which gives us this result. Now we need to add a smaller image in a smaller block, which is, which also has its own animation. And now our, our website looks like this.
Finally, we want to add a quotation text uh, with its own animation. And with, the, with these changes, uh, we have our initial page. For better user experience, let's create an arrow which will also switch between periods. Uh, we need to create a simple div for that. Uh, then we need to add uh, animation and a click handler. And we'll use uh, an SVG icon from our assets. <coughs> uh, we also need to add this component to the home uh, with a callback to switch between periods. And of course we need to add it to our layout. And now we have an arrow component which changes periods and we can go back and forth. We also need to create a subject switcher uh, where we take our subjects uh, which are history and culture and similar to periods we map them into h4 elements mm. initially they should not be visible and we want to animate them using uh, this function get position x animate uh, which basically changes their position on x axis on exit we want them to become transparent again uh, here we add classes and uh, on click, it should change uh, the subject and become disabled for uh, 1.5 seconds. Uh, now we'll add a subject switcher to the home component uh, with the handler of subject change. Uh, we should also change arrow click callback uh, so it also, it is also able to switch subjects. And of course we want it to add, to be in our layout. And now we can switch between history and culture. Uh, also for subjects, we want a different sliding animation that we have now. Uh, it will be a similar one to th that that we've created before for uh, our slides, but uh, it will have uh, a different direction from the top. And inside home component, we need to add this new animation configuration. And inside handle subject change, uh, we need to pass an adjusted object with this new animation. And we need to store it in the state. As a result, we have this new animation for subjects. Uh, last, last thing that we want to do is to slightly change the animation for country so it becomes more consistent with the project. Uh, let's go back to our custom hook and create a reflected animation of uh, slide from right, which will slide from left. Uh, 
let's go back to our, our uh, let's go back to our home component and we need to adjust uh, the country change uh, callback And in the next, in the else block, uh, we want to set the next colors. Uh, and now with this change, uh, our animation is more consistent across the site. That's it for today. I hope you find our educational series useful. Stay tuned for more and see ya.